In the last video, I introduced the second derivative test to you, and I explained to you that it was an alternative way to find our relative extrema rather than using the sign chart. In this video, I'm going to show you that it's not necessarily going to be a better way. If your second derivative, like in our last example, was very easy to compute, and ours was, this one is a very easily computable derivative, then the second derivative test is most likely going to be shorter than using the sign chart. However, if your second derivative is going to be more difficult to compute, then it might actually be better to do the sign chart way. Because if it's going to take you longer to compute the second derivative than it would by setting up a sign chart, then it's not necessarily going to be a better method. Another limitation to the second derivative is that we found if it's positive, then it's a minimum. If it's negative, then it's a maximum. But what happens if we get f double prime of our critical value is neither positive nor negative. So what happens if it comes out to be zero? We didn't discuss that issue. Well, if that is the case, then the test is inconclusive. And the reason is because if it is neither concave up nor concave down, then our graph is going to look like one of these two orange graphs here. Well, that doesn't necessarily tell us that this point is a minimum or a maximum. It, these two images actually show you that it's a plateau, but it could be a plateau or it could be a minimum or it could be a maximum. So if you take your second derivative, you plug in your critical value and you get out zero, that doesn't actually tell you anything about your test whatsoever. It could be a plateau, it could be a maximum, or it could be a minimum. So it's inconclusive. And if that's the case, then you're going to have to do the sign chart anyways to figure out what it actually is at the moment, whether which one of those three things it is. So the second derivative test does have its limitations to it, and sometimes the sign chart might actually be a better method. Okay, let's do the second derivative test again, but I have a more complicated function here rather than the polynomial that we saw in the last example. So let's see why it has its limitations in this example. f of t is equal to t over t squared plus 3. We want to find the extrema of this by using the second derivative test. The first thing that we need to do is we need to find the domain. This one has a fraction in it, so we have to worry about where the denominator of our fraction is equal to zero. If I solve this by forcing in a square root of both sides, I see that t is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3i, but I get an imaginary number, which does not make any sense, so that means my denominator can never be zero, so that means my denominator will always be okay. So I don't have any vertical asymptotes in this problem, so that, mean my, so that means my domain is all real numbers. Okay, now the first derivative to tell us our possible critical values or our possible relative extrema. I'm going to use my quotient rule here, and it is the original of the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the original of the top times the derivative of the bottom, all over the denominator squared. Or you might know it as low d high minus high d low, all over low low. Simplifying this, that gives me t squared plus 3 minus 2t squared, all over my denominator squared. And combining like terms, that gives me my first derivative is simplified to be negative t squared plus 3 all over t squared plus 3 squared. Or if you don't like that negative in the beginning, then you can factor it out. That gives me t squared minus 3 all over t squared plus 3 quantity squared. Okay. Now we need to set this equal to zero to figure out what our critical values are. We know that we don't have to worry about the denominator because I can eliminate it by multiplying by it. So that means all I need to worry about is when my numerator is equal to zero. So that means I need to worry about where t squared minus 3 is equal to zero. If I move my 3 to the other side, 
and force in a square root, which forces in a plus or minus. I have two critical values, one being positive root 3 and one being negative root 3. Now, at this point, that's where the separation becomes. I can either try and do the sign chart to figure out whether this is maximum or minimum, or since this problem specified, I must do the second derivative test. So that means I need to find my second derivative and plug this value into my second derivative. So I have copied things over to give me more room. So this way I can compute my second derivative. So I have low d high, the original of the low, times the derivative of the high. And I'm going to do it in this format. So the derivative of my numerator gives me negative 2t minus high d low, a negative t squared plus 3. When I take the derivative of my low, I have a chain rule. 2 times the original of the numerator to the first power times the derivative of the inside all over the denominator squared. And when I square something that's already squared, I multiply my exponents. That gives me something to the fourth power. Okay, so now I want to simplify this, and I'm going to do this by factoring the numerator. In the numerator, I see that I have my two pieces, my two terms, one here and one here. I want to see what I have in common between those two terms. I have a 2 in common, a t in common, and I have a t squared plus 3. I have one of those in common. So between my two terms, let's see what I have left. My first one's going to go here, and my second one's going to go there. In my first one, I took out a 2 and a t, and I took out one of these t squared plus 3s. That means I'm left with a negative times this t squared plus 3. In my back piece, I took out a 2t and one of these t squared plus 3s. So that means I'm left with a 2 times this negative t squared plus 3. And that's all over my denominator to the fourth power. Simplifying a little bit, I see I have this t squared plus 3 in both the numerator and the denominator. So let me cancel one of those out in both places, leaving me with the 3 in the denominator. And then distributing in my brackets. So I'm going to distribute the negative through here and distribute the negative 2 through there. That gives me negative t squared minus 3 plus 2t squared minus 6. So combining what I have left in my brackets, that gives me a t squared minus 9. And that is all over t squared plus 3 to the third. Now, I can factor this piece a little bit more in the numerator if you want to do that. That might make the next step a little bit easier, the difference of squares. t plus 3, t minus 3. All over t squared plus 3 to the third. Okay, so I finally have the most simplified version of my second derivative. So now you probably see why the second derivative test isn't necessarily going to be a shortcut to the first way of knowing how to find relative extrema. If the second derivative is easier to take, then it's probably going to be a better method. If your second derivative is more complicated to take, then it's probably going to be a better method to use these sign charts. So now that I have my second derivative, what I need to do then is I need to plug in these two values to see whether I get positives or negatives. So I've given myself more room. I have my most factored version of my second derivative. So now let me actually plug in my critical value. So now I need to figure out what f double prime of root 3 is. And I'm just going to worry about positives and negatives. If I plug it in for 2t, that gives me a positive. If I plug it into this piece here, root 3 plus 3, that gives me positive. If I plug it into this piece here, the root 3 is going to be smaller than the 3, so that piece is going to give me a negative. In the bottom, since I am squaring it, it's always going to be positive. 
So my bottom's always going to be positive. So this gives me negative, which tells me it's concave down at that point, which tells me that I have a maximum value when t is equal to positive root 3. So that is one of my answers. The second answer is to figure out what's happening at negative root 3. If I plug it into my first piece, I get negative. If I plug it into my second piece, I get positive. My third piece, I get negative, all over positive. And so that tells me that's going to be positive, which is concave up, which tells me I have a minimum at that value there. So a minimum when t is equal to negative square root 3. Okay. You are more than welcome to get out your graphing calculator to double check these answers, but I'm pretty confident with what we have. And so my final answer is we have a maximum at positive root 3 and a minimum at negative root 3. So this video was to show you the limitations to the second derivative test. If the second derivative is complicated to take, then it's probably not going to be a better test. And if we get the second derivative is equal to 0, then the test is inconclusive. That doesn't tell us that we have a maximum or a minimum or neither. It doesn't tell us anything at all. So what we have to do past that point is to use the sign chart in the first place.